good evening. Tonight is a new moon, and I thought it would be a perfect time to charge and energize my new tarot deck and break it in because I have not yet used these cards. This is the Pagan Tarot deck, the new edition by Gina M. Pache. This deck is a pagan deck and comes to us from Italy inside the magnetic box is a guide this guide depicts the cards and what they stand for as well as provides notes and education on tarot the different ways to use tarot with a deck of tarot cards. This deck in particular has 78 colored cards. The illustrations for this deck are done by Luca Raimondo and Cristiano Spadoni. I've already lit my candles. I have my earth, my air, my water, and fire, along with my spirit. And here is my new moon candle. Tonight is a new moon. It is a black candle. A new moon represents new beginnings and the perfect opportunity to start change. And then here in this jar is my goddess candle as I am intuning myself with the goddess, the triple goddess, tonight during the power of her moon. The cards in this deck have beautiful artwork and are a great depiction of both modern and old. And I'll read more about why that is in just a moment. I thought tonight before doing a card reading, oh, <laughs> I would explain this deck a bit. I found this particular deck at a store in Tulsa, Oklahoma um, about a week ago now, um, a little store called Peace of Mind, um, and it was not a store I thought I was walking into, but was very happy to be in. And I found this deck through a couple, and this one really spoke to me. So I decided this would be the one I would get, I am sure. However, that you could probably find this deck if you were interested online. I particularly like to buy my tarot decks in person. I like to hold them and get a feel for their energy. See if I have a connection. But let's start with an introduction. Bright blessings 
and welcome to the Pagan Tarot. This deck was designed specifically for the modern Pagan practitioner. The card images are meant to reflect and resonate with your own life experiences. This book will guide you through understanding tarot in general, and this deck in particular, you'll be able to get started using your cards for divination and meditation. At the end, you'll find some spreads to try for yourself, but first, a brief history in tarot. I'm not going to read the entire history or structure, but just some highlights from the passages. This says that tarot has a long and controversial history, although probably not quite as long and controversial as paganism. Briefly, evidence indicates that tarot was first used by nobles in Europe during the Renaissance to play a card game called Tarachi. These early decks were works of art, often covered in gold leaf and painted by commission. Hmm. It says that during the 20th century, the tarot changed dramatically, most notably with the creation of two decks. The Toth tarot, designed by Aleister Crawley and painted by Frida Harris, and the Rider Waite tarot, designed by author Edward Waite painted by Pamela Pixie Coleman-Smith and published by the Rider Company in England. It then speaks to the structure of tarot. You can find lots of types of card decks for divination, but all tarot decks follow a certain structure. Since they contain 78 cards, which can seem like a lot of meanings to learn, understanding the structure makes it easy. The tarot deck is compromised, sorry, comprised of two distinct parts. The major arcana consists of 22 cards, and the minor arcana has 56. Arcana means secrets. The four suits of the tarot have different names but relate directly to the suits of the playing card deck. The clubs equals the wands, also known as rods, batons, or staves. Hearts is cups, also known as chalice. The spade is the sword, and diamonds are pentacles, which can also be known as coins, discs, stones. In addition, tarot card suits are associated with the four elements. Wands equal fire, cups equal water, swords equal earth, and pen I'm sorry, swords equal air. Getting ahead of myself. Pentacles Just as the suits are associated with elements, so is the major arcana. It is connected with spirit. Each major arcana card has a different name, like the fool, the hermit, the tower, which, along with its illustration, help identify its meaning. Most people use tarot cards for divination or to tell the future. But unless you believe the future is set in stone and that you have no free will, the future cannot be predicted absolutely. But you can get a sense 
because once events are set in motion, there is often a likely or probable outcome. It says, really, tarot is less about reading the future as it stands, and more about gathering information to make better choices so you can create the life you want. There are four main parts to a reading. Asking the question, picking a spread, preparing for the reading, and interpreting the reading. There are different spreads that you can choose, different ways to interpret the reading. And the Pagan Tarot deck I'm using today does not use reversals. Cards that appear upside down in a reading, in the traditional sense. That is, alternative meanings for reverse cards are not provided. Instead, you have options regarding reversals. First, you can, of course, ignore them and simply turn the card right side up for the reading. Or second, you can adapt a particular theory regarding reversals and implement that technique in your reading. For example, opposite meetings, take the upright meeting and totally reverse it. Blocked energy, read the card as usual, but realize that the energy is blocked or lessened by the situation. And pay attention, read the reverse card as if it were jumping up and down trying to get your attention. For some reason, this card must have particular significance to the reading. There is also a section on meditation with cards. I have not practiced much of this. Maybe one day we'll come back to it. The book then moves to the different spreads. The meditation spread, Three card spread. A Wicca's Cross, which has 20 cards. A short and sweet pentagram. This is a spread that I use the most. It is a thorough quick answer. What you see, what you don't see, what you can change, what you cannot change, and what you can expect. There is the new moon spread, which is a five card spread. This will be the one we do tonight. The pre casting spell spread, made of four cards. And then the book moves into the arcana, or arcana, as some say. Let's focus here on the new moon spread. Use this spread to eliminate issues situations, and energies presented in the upcoming lunar cycle. Perform this spread on a new moon. Each card represents a week in the lunar cycle, or one aspect of the moon to the next. The first card goes at the top in front of is the new moon at the beginning. The second card falls to the right and is progress the second quarter. The third card is the full moon manifestations. And the fourth card is reflection the fourth quarter. And the fifth card goes on top of the first card in the spread and is the completion and a new beginning. As this is a new deck, I will read and show the artwork for each card. I will briefly shuffle. Take out the title card. Let's see. I will then split the deck three ways. I always stack, split the deck again, and I will restack. And then one, two, three, four, and now this 
the other direction here. My new moon candle is actually in the directional setting for where the new moon lies, based on where I'm at. I can see it out my window right now. It's lovely. My new moon card, my deck card. Let's use the deck to decide. And now I'll pick my cards. Starting with the first card in my spread. This again being the new moon card at the beginning. I have flipped the universe. This card is a major arcana. Show you the artwork on this one. This card being the beginning, it says, Our witch is surrounded by the four elements of the tarot and of the witch's craft. The earth elemental is a gnome, the water elemental is an undine, the fire Elemental of fire is a salamander, and the air elemental of air is a sylph. A handsome male witch is standing directly behind her, and his arms lifting under hers and helping her and helping to hold hers up and out where they together direct the energy of the elementals. He is not teaching her, they are working together as equals. Energy moves around them in a circle, connecting the four elementals to create the magical circle within which all in life is balanced, and they can be at one with the universe. The witch is surrounded by the elementals of the four realms that she has mastered. Earth for physicality, air for mentality, water for for emotionality, and fire for spirituality. Similarly, when we reach this level of achievement, we will experience a calm and balance that is only possible with a strong connection to the universe. The universe moves on a different clock than your own, and has a bigger view than you can imagine. Throughout your life, you will have moments when you can clearly see your place in the universe and how your destiny is entwined with those of others in the world. Cherish these moments. They are rare and powerful and can become a place of strength in your soul to draw on during times of fear or confusion. Our second card is judgment. Yeah, I love judgment cards. This says, our witch finds herself in a therapist's office. Reclined on a couch, both she and the therapist, also a witch, wear robes. While under hypnosis, she sees herself in a historical scene. She is watching soldiers being hung. Another vision shows her tied to a stake, surrounded by kindling and wood, looking as if she's about to be burned. The card, traditionally called Judgment, when reflecting the Christian Judgment Day, would be more appropriately named Karma in the pagan tarot. Karma the pagan counterpart to Judgment Day and represents the cycles of life, death, and reincarnation, as well as the law of threefold return. 
sometimes to understand our present situation, we must revisit the past and try to learn lessons we may have missed the first time around. In the past, our witch clearly witnessed the death of loved ones and suffered a horrible death herself. Now she must determine what lesson she had learned in those experiences. Judgment is similar to the Justice card in that it refers to a karmic sense of judgment and not a legal sense. In judgment, you are asked to look at your actions and see how they've brought you to your present. Also, look at your current situation. Sorry current actions and imagine what kind of future they'll bring in a karmic sense. You will be responsible for all of your actions past and present, but you can create a better present by learning from the past. You can ask, you can set the groundwork for a better future by making good, sound, spiritual decisions now, making a better life is within your power. Our third card is the sun. In this simple yet surprisingly elusive scene, we see our witch is enjoying a leisurely day at the beach under the blazing sun. She looks dreamy as she languidly traces a pinnacle in the sand. Nearby, children build a sand castle, and the surf lazily laps the shore. After the trying recent events, our witch is surprising, sorry, savoring the joy of childlike innocence in a beautiful day. We too should learn to live in the moment, cherish small, happy occasions, and know that these are two spiritual events in and of themselves. Find the happy part of your soul that struggles to keep your hopes and dreams alive despite the difficulties you face. You need a break, a vacation of sorts. It is time to let that happy soul make some decisions and take you beyond your problems and out into the world again. <laughs> That is our manifestation card, is it not? Our fourth card is the fourth quarter and represents reflection. We have the moon. I shuffled and split this deck and then I feel I am pulling the <laughs> priority order here. The sun, the moon, justice. They're all rather close to each other in the deck. By the moon, our witch holds aloft her athame in her right hand and a quartz crystal in her left. She sits on an outcropping of rocks over the water, under a huge, rich, full moon. A lobster crawls up on a lower rock, apparently to observe this strange yet powerful scene, seeking deep healing and peace with her inner self. Our witch performs a solitary rite of atonement by drawing down the moon. She seeks her deepest fears. If she brings them forth, like the lobster emerging from the water, she can face and conquer them. In the tower, she faced fears and trauma by facing the monsters and others. In the moon, we face the monsters in ourselves. And we all know that these are the scariest. Because of our experience in the stars card, we have the faith confidence and courage to do this. Facing the monsters within is a difficult experience, but it is one you must do. Keep in mind that moonlight has 
that's a way of exaggerating or altering things. The monsters you see may not reflect reality. Look closely and don't be afraid. The goddess and god live in you along with those monsters you think are there. Draw on their divine power to deal with the shadow. Once you face them, they will no longer have power over you. And finally, we come back to the new moon. This is the completion and the new beginning. We have here the eight of swords. Our witch is faced with a difficult situation indeed. Blindfolded and tied up, she is surrounded by a circle of swords. Her coven mates surround the outside situation. They are there for support, but not for direct help. She is imprisoned and must find her own way out. The exit is unblocked and right in front of her, but she has no way of knowing that. You may feel alone and powerless. While this is a situation you must face alone, your loved ones are with you in spirit and will help whenever and however they can. Most importantly, your way out is not difficult. Continue walking confidently on your path and it will take you straight to freedom. What a powerful and beautiful reading tonight, under the new moon, a time for beginnings and change. How will you interpret tonight's reading? How will you put it into play? How will you use the power of the new moon for a new beginning? Thank you for joining me tonight. Merry meet, merry part, merry meet again, and blessed be.